Cyberpunk 2077 just got a new DLC, but it's probably not what most of you expect, as this is a $20 sound pack DLC. It's definitely a bit of a strange one, but honestly, after testing this out for myself, I think quite a few of you may end up interested in it, but the game is also dead, apparently. You've probably seen the reports that Cyberpunk 2077 has finished development, but there definitely could be more on the way, as the recent earnings report from CDPR has given us some idea of what we could expect next. And I think CDPR may even be teasing mod tools coming to Cyberpunk 2077 here, but either way, modding is looking like a bright spot in the future of Cyberpunk 2077, as I also had the opportunity to test the Cyberpunk multiplayer mod, which I'll be talking about a bit later in this video. But with the Cyberpunk 2077 display, you can also have a bright spot on your wall. Displates are high-quality metal posters that you can easily swap out or rearrange. They have a ton of designs available right now for Cyberpunk 2077 and really all of your favorite games. Tons of Elden Ring options are also available. And if you use my affiliate link down below to pick up a display for yourself, I'll get a bit of a kickback while you can get some discounts for yourself. But looking first, Cyberpunk 2077 just got a $20 immersive sound DLC. This is made by Embody Audio, who creates these immersive game packs for a wide array of different games out there. But this was made at least partially in partnership with CDPR, as CDPR has been advertising this release, and as the title does suggest, it makes the sound of Cyberpunk 2077 far more immersive, using head tracking as well as a surround setup to cater to that, with the idea being you don't need some crazy surround sound setup to have this work and instead just need a pair of headphones. The way this works is it's $20 to own forever, but alternatively you can just try a two week free trial right now, where you're going to download the Embody software that you'll just run side by side with Cyberpunk 2077 to enhance the sounds. You can just run this as is, but with a few steps you can open up several more features. You can use your phone to map out your ears, like yeah, literally this is measuring my ear distance to the front of my face to create a personal HRTF, which will then be imported and if you have a webcam you can also set up head tracking, so basically your webcam will monitor your head's position and dynamically change the audio depending on which direction your face is facing. So okay, that's all really cool, but how does it actually feel when you're playing? What I noticed when using this one is a lot of the high octane action sequences or even just driving around with a ton of sounds around you weren't all that different compared to vanilla Cyberpunk 2077. are of course a bit toned down due to this being filmed and re-rendered and posted on YouTube, but even as I was playing this myself, I found using the sound pack doesn't necessarily make things sound better, it just makes things sound different. Certain sounds that are normally much quieter are now a bit louder and for me a lot more noticeable. When you're driving around or taking on a group of enemies head on, this doesn't really have a huge impact, but this DLC did yield really cool results in two specific examples. When you're surrounded by enemies, you can really differentiate between their locations while using this one. Instead of it just being, okay, I'm in combat, there's a ton going on, I felt like I could almost pinpoint the exact location of every enemy around me because I could just hear them. And I could hear some of the minor details. I could hear them talking, I could hear them reloading their weapon. And honestly, I didn't even realize enemies made that many different noises until I started using this one. But where this DLC sound pack will truly shine is playing the game a bit slower. And really when doing some of the stealth focus content in Cyberpunk 2077, the immersive sound pack brings a major upgrade.
Walking slowly through environments with this on just made everything far easier to track. It almost just feels like your senses are more in tune with the game than ever before. particularly when there's music playing. Like here, I can almost pinpoint exactly where that music is. What in the fuck? I can even hear one of the enemies shadow boxing or hitting air nearby. As I move into this next room, you can hear the more gradual fade of the music. It's far more like a lifelike dissipation compared to vanilla cyberpunk where things are a lot more jittery. And throw this on during some of the more tense stealth missions, and I gotta say, this makes Cyberpunk 2077 a dramatically more frightening game. hear a bit more. Some of the sounds were a lot more intense, so when those scary stealth missions came into play, they were a lot scarier. Some of the action scenes definitely do get some improvements as well though. It feels like things just get a bit more intense with the sound pack on. It's almost like the gunfights are more impactful on your senses, and overall it definitely feels easier to place enemies around you. But it also serves to highlight some oddities with the base Cyberpunk 2077 sound mixing. Sometimes things just sound sort of odd, almost like levels are maxing out. I wouldn't say using the sound pack is a comprehensive sound upgrade. At some points, it definitely sounds a bit worse compared to Vanilla Cyberpunk. The head tracking feature is definitely cool, so if I look sideways, all of the sound from Cyberpunk 2077 will play out of my right ear cup, because that's the ear that's pointed towards the screen, and that's where all the sounds are originating from. And well, yeah, it's a cool feature, it's not really that functional. Like, when are you looking around while playing a video game? Most of the time, you're just looking at the screen you're playing the video game on. So while cool, I wouldn't really consider that a selling point. So overall, I would say this one is a ton of fun with stealth builds, but in general, it's not going to be for everyone, and honestly, I don't even think it's for me. The $20 sound DLC is definitely not some comprehensive sound upgrade for Cyberpunk 2077, but it is a pretty cool stealth add-on. So if you're doing a new playthrough with a stealth build, hey, try the two-week free trial and maybe this one's worth it for you. But what is next for Cyberpunk 2077? Over the past few weeks, a ton of reports have come forward saying that Cyberpunk 2077 development has ended. The source for all of this was the recent CD Projekt Red earnings call, which showed that the developers in Cyberpunk 2077 is now at zero. And later on in the call, the CEO clarifies this even further, saying, when it comes to updates, there could be small things happening in terms of maintenance, but we're not planning anything major. So basically, it's pretty much done, more maintenance than anything else. And there definitely are a few things that need maintaining. In the last update, the new crystal coat feature was broken for cars, so now the colors don't populate correctly anymore, as well as FSR 3 was supposed to come to Cyberpunk 2077 at some point. It has begun rolling out more and more to other games on PC, so hopefully we'll see this soon, but we don't really know when. And this too wouldn't necessarily be a full-on CDPR project, but instead likely AMD stepping in to help out. There's some Cyberpunk spin-off projects in the works right now, so I wouldn't be shocked if we see a smaller update that ties into some of those, basically just what they did with Edge Runners. CDPR is working with some mobile companies, as well as they are working on a live-action piece of Cyberpunk content. So whenever those things drop, I imagine we could see something in the game, but also maybe Maybe mods? A few weeks ago now, official mod support was added for The Witcher 3 with the release of RedKit. This is a pretty big deal. This is almost exactly what Bethesda does, where the tools used to make the game, kind of, I mean, they're technically an edited version of those tools, but those tools are now made available to modders so they could start adding in custom quests, some custom animations, and more. And while this is super exciting for The Witcher 3, that's a very old game at this point. The modding scene is definitely on the pale end as we look ahead to the next Witcher, but many fans immediately began to wonder if this too could come to Cyberpunk 2077, as this does have a bigger modding scene and it's a far newer game. Unfortunately, you can't just port the red kit from The Witcher 3 to Cyberpunk. A lot of additional work would need to be done, but that may be happening. As during this recent earnings call, somebody asked this exact question to the CEO, to which he does respond. When it comes to any 
any future things, cyberpunk or anything related, I mean, uh, once we have something on our hands, we will definitely talk about that. But in general, I would indicate that uh, uh, community created content by means of mods uh, enabled and powered by uh, really well prepared tools is something we are fond of. And, uh, and we do see value in that. Uh, uh, in how we interact in the fan, with the fans. To me, that response makes it seem like they do want to add mod support to Cyberpunk 2077 and are likely doing so right now. But at the same time, since this is a work in progress and will take some time to get done, they don't have anything to talk about right now. But that's my interpretation. Let me know in the comments down below, how did you take that one? And either way, modders are doing things with Cyberpunk 2077 even without official mod tools. I was recently able to participate in one of the public tests for CyberMP, the Cyberpunk 2077 multiplayer mod. And here, I was able to play Cyberpunk 2077 multiplayer on a server with a ton of other players from all over the world. And this was shockingly good. Like the sync between one player to another was just way better than it had any right being from a single developer mod project. During this, we organized races together, we got into all kinds of hijinks and deathmatch, of course, and all around, it was just a ton of fun doing open world activities in Night City with a bunch of other people. And that was a couple of months ago. This footage I'm showing you here is old now. Even further tests and even further refinement have occurred since then. At some point, I do plan on making a full video on this experience, so get subscribed for that. But also, check out CyberMP for yourself. I'll have some links to their Discord as well as other social channels if you want to get a closer look at the upcoming mod. As well as, of course, Cyberpunk 2077 moving to zero developers isn't entirely a bad thing as, yeah, CDPR has to move on. We can also see how 407 developers are now working on the next Witcher game known as Polaris, with CDPR saying, we're nearing the end of the pre-production phase this year, and we're planning to enter the production phase later this year. And even the Cyberpunk 2077 sequel with Orion is already at over 50 devs, as the concepting phase progresses on that project. We are kind of in that weird lull period for CDPR right now, they won't have any more games for us for a couple of years at least, but there seemingly will be other things. Mod tools could come to Cyberpunk 2077, we will likely get at least one mobile game, and of course that Cyberpunk live action project will get a reveal at some point, I'm expecting 2025. Although if you do use cloud saves on GOG Galaxy, make sure you check their size. Any saves over 200 megabytes will be deleted on August 31st. As well as one other piece of news with Cyberpunk, there was a recent leak around the once planned moon expansion for this game. This made the rounds in the media, but the origin origin of these files is the CDPR hack from 2021. During this, the source code of Cyberpunk 2077 was stolen, and as such, I'm not going to be covering this moon leak because it just kind of feels wrong. But either way, that is where things stand right now on Cyberpunk 2077, and if you are interested in more, check out this video to learn more about those official mod tools that just came to The Witcher 3 and could come to Cyberpunk in the future. 